Assalamu alaikum, I am Pavel and I welcome you all to the second video of this calculus tutorial series. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you didn't watch the previous video, then I'd like to request you to watch that video to get a clear idea about the basics of limit. Because in this video, I will just discuss about the techniques of calculating limits. But the main idea of limit, when we should use limit and what is the origin of limits, these uh, ideas have been discussed in the previous video. So I hope before watching this full video, you uh, just go back to the first video and watch that and then continue from uh, this video. That will uh, help you and that will be helpful for you to understand this video very easily. Okay. So as I mentioned already that in the previous lecture, we have uh, discussed about basic ideas of limits. Now, in this video, what I will show you is that I will not go in details of limits every time we need to calculate some uh, programs, the limits of some programs. Here, we will directly know the procedure and the techniques to calculate limits. Okay. So, let's start. The first technique that we will see here is to put the values directly. Okay. So, the first technique will be put the values directly. So, let's see an example. Limit x tends to 2, 10 divided by x. So, in this problem, we can see that the value of x is approaching towards 2. So, what we will try to do is that we will try to put the values of x directly. Here, the value of x is 2. If we put the value of x here directly, we get 10 divided by 2. So, we get 5. And we can put that value and we face no problem. Okay. Another example, limit x tends to 5, x divided by 2. So, we put the value of x we get 5 divided by 2. So, this is the answer. So, you might think that if calculating limit is this much easy, then why people get afraid of calculating limits? Okay, so this is not the uh, every time scenario, right? This is the simplest case you might end up with. This is not the case you will face in most of the problems. In fact, you will not face uh, this type of problems in real life. You will face some uh, difficult problems. I should not say difficult, some uh, less easy problems. Okay, and this will be the final scenario. Okay, so when can we put these values, and when we will get some uh, this type of problems? Okay, let's see. If we look into this problem, limit x tends to two. And we have x square minus 4 divided by x minus 2. You see here, if we put the value of x, that is 2, in the numerator and the denominator, we get 0 divided by 0. So in this scenario, we cannot put the value because if we put the value of x, we get indeterminate form or undefined form. Because 0 divided by 0 here in this case is indeterminate or in other cases, if we put the value of the variable and in the denominator we get a zero, we might end up uh, getting undetermined, uh, un undefined form or indeterminate form. Okay, so zero divided by zero is indeterminate form, and something else divided by zero is undefined form. So in either case, we cannot calculate the value. So in those particular cases, we should not or we cannot put the values of the variable. So in those particular cases, we will have to follow some different techniques. Okay? So this method of putting the values directly will be applicable only if we do not end up getting indeterminate or undefined forms. So we will be able to put the values when we do not end up with those situations. Okay? So the next technique we will learn here is resolving factors. Basically, this is the first technique, the putting of values, we will be using this concept in resolving the factors as well. 
just I have shown the technique that when should, should we or when can we put the values of the variables resolve into factors. So this should be the first technique we will try to implement when we get indeterminate or undefined norms. Say for this particular example, let's write it here once again. Limit x tends to 2 in the numerator x square minus 5 divided by x minus 2. So we can see that if you put the value of x, we get 0 in the numerator and we get 0 in the denominator as well. So we cannot put the value. So what we need to do is that we will have to try and find a factorization. Okay, we can resolve into factors. Okay, so we can apply the formula a square minus b square here, x square minus 4. We can write x square minus 4 as x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we can write x plus 2 times x minus 2. In the denominator, we have x minus 2. So x minus 2, x minus 2 cancels out, and we get x tends to 2, x plus 2. Okay. Now we can put the value of x. Okay. So it will be 2 plus 2, which is equal to 4. Okay. So we have seen that after calculating and applying this technique, we will end up to a situation when putting the values doesn't create any problems. I mean, doesn't end up in indeterminate or undefined forms. So we can put a value. So this technique is applied here. Okay. So we need to put the values of the variables at the very end of the problem. Okay. That's why I have shown you this technique of putting the values. So when can we put the values? You have to remember when there is no indeterminate or undefined forms after applying the value. In those particular cases, we can apply the values. Okay. And another thing you have to remember is that. When you put the values in that particular line, you should not write the limit, okay? Because we have already applied the values, okay? So you need not write limit x to two uh, once again here or in the final line as well, okay? So these are the points you have to remember. So let me give you another example. I hope you will be able to solve this problem at your own, okay? So another example is limit x to say 3 x square minus 9 divided by x minus 3. I hope every one of you will be able to solve this problem at your own if you uh, listened and watched the video carefully then you should be able to solve this problem at your own. Okay. So before joining with me pause the video and try to solve at your own and after you try then match the solution with me. So let's begin. Limit x tends to 3, x plus 3, x minus 3, divided by x minus 3, so x minus 3, x minus 3 cancels out, and we get limit x tends to 3, x plus 3. Now we can put the value of x, so we get 3 plus 3, which is 6. So very easy. So I hope this technique of of a result into factors is quite easy for you to understand and I hope you will be able to apply this technique in similar problems. So let me give you another example. Okay, So I will not solve the problem initially. This will be a task for you and after a while I will solve this problem. Okay. So I hope you have written everything I have written here. So let me erase this. So let me give an example for it. Limit x tends to 3 in the denominator. Let me write x minus 3. And in the numerator, x square minus 5x plus 6. Okay. So this is a bit different, but the concept is same. We will try to resolve into factors because Initially, we will try to put the value of the variable. So if you put x equals to 3 in the denominator, we get 3 minus 3, which is 0. So we need to look in the numerator because if we get 0 or non-zero, whatever we get, we will end up in either indeterminate form or undefined form. 
So in either case, we cannot calculate the values. So we cannot put the value of the variable directly. Now the next technique we know is resolving factors. So we would like to apply this technique here. So before watching the further solution, pause this video and try to solve that your own. After you are done, then continue watching. Okay. So I will solve this problem, solve this technique. In the denominator, we have x minus 3, and in the numerator, uh, if you apply middle term factorization in the numerator, we will end up with x minus 2 times x minus 3. So you will get limit x plus 3, x minus 3, x minus 3 cancels out, x minus 2. Now we can put the value of x. So we get 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. Now, some of you might wonder that how have I calculated this factorization so fast? Okay, so let me uh, show you the technique. You have x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, so what do you get? You have to make the sum as minus 5 and the product as plus 6 because uh, here you can assume as 1, so 1 times 6 is 6. So you have to uh, divide minus 5 in such a way that the sum is minus 5 and the product is plus 6. So it is the way this is minus 2 minus 3. So you can write minus 3 6 minus 3 6. So minus 2 minus 3 minus 5 and if you multiply these two you get 6. So you need to do only up to this part minus 2 minus 3. Okay? And the next class is very easy. This is minus 2 so you write x minus 2. This is minus 3 times x minus 2. And if you don't believe, then let me show you the details. You see x squared minus twice x minus twice x plus 6. Because if you take x as common, so you get x minus 2. And you take minus 3 common, you get another x minus 2. Now you take common x minus 2, so you get x minus 2 times x minus 3. So this is what we get. Okay. So I hope you will be able to solve this type of problems. Uh, the first technique is very easy, that putting the values of the variables directly. So when can we put the values? If we don't end up with indeterminate forms or undefined forms, in those particular cases, we can put the values of the variables. And if we end up in those situations, we cannot put the values. And in that particular case, we will have to try the second technique which is resolve into factors but there will be some situations when you cannot uh, factorize the numerator or the numerators so what would you do in those particular situations we will discuss it in the next video so i hope uh, you learned something from this video if you found this video helpful for you please uh, spread the news of my channel to your friends and family members and near ones so that uh, I get inspiration to make more and more videos for you. So I hope uh, you will be watching the next videos as well. Till then, uh, stay fine, take care, and love us.